Cardano has just received a massive interoperability boost with the introduction and integration of the IBC protocol. Now, this protocol is used within the Cosmos ecosystem with over 100 different blockchains using the IBC protocol to intercommunicate. In addition, there's been some updates that will allow for seamless integration of EVM-based apps on Cardano-based sidechains, which I want to highlight as a part of today's video. That said, let's jump right on in. What's up, Beta Nation? A welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. My name's Fareed. As a part of today's video, we've got a huge update, a big piece of breaking news when it comes to interoperability in the Cardano ecosystem. Now, this is dealing with the IBC protocol, which stands for the Inter Blockchain Communication Protocol, which is actually created and used by the Cosmos ecosystem. Now, Cosmos basically connects over 100 different blockchains together, and we're now integrating the IBC protocol directly within Cardano. What this means is that this opens up communication between Cardano and any other blockchain using the IBC protocol. Without any further ado, let's jump into today's content. This is the initial post that was just released earlier today by the official Cardano Foundation. It reads, News, Cardano integrates inter-blockchain communication or IBC protocol to enhance connectivity from Cosmos and Ethereum directly to Cardano. Now, they've got a fully dedicated article, which I want to jump into as a part of today's video. As always, if you guys enjoy content like this, please make sure to smash that thumbs up on your way in. If you want more content like this, highlighting everything in Cardano, consider subscribing to the channel Dapp Central. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me surrounding IBC, Cardano, or ETH, then make sure to leave a comment down below. Now, taking a look here at the article, it, it reads, Cardano integrates IBC to enhance connectivity and to join the interchain ecosystem. Now, this is just the very beginning. I want to kick things off here with a review of the article. Following the article, I do want to briefly take a look at the actual architecture for IBC, and then I want to explain exactly what all these different portions means. So that includes the application, the channels, the connections, and the light client. So make sure to stay tuned throughout the entire video. Jumping into the article, it kicks off by stating, as businesses increasingly explore blockchain technology, challenges related to scalability, data privacy, and interoperability can arise. The Cardano Foundation has therefore been working on a building block that introduces inter-blockchain communication protocol or IBC capabilities to the Cardano blockchain specifically designed to enable reliable transactions and data exchanges across distinct blockchain and networks. Now, let's take a look at how the actual IBC network right now currently looks. As you can see here, I mean, again, a huge number of blockchains that are currently building. Some of the bigger, more notable ones include the Cosmos Hub. We've got Celestia, Axelar. We've also got Injective and Fetch AI, which is dealing with AI technology. And if we just take a look here at the volume, again, you can see $456 million worth of volume being um, or going through uh, Osmosis, excuse me, in the last 30 days, 247 million going through Celestia. And then taking a look here at the total transactions over the last 30 days, we've got over 75 million transactions on Injective, followed by nearly 15 million across Carbon. So these are getting a lot of use and a lot of benefit, right? Again, in the sense that they're all able to interconnect or intercommunicate. Jumping back into the article, it states the IBC framework works not only to enhance existing systems, but also to expand what they can achieve. It facilitates the transfer of data and assets between different blockchains while still ensuring enterprises benefit from the security and deterministic fees inherent to Cardano's blockchain. So basically allowing for Cardano to have many more friends now and opportunities going forward. There was a recent article that was released by uh, Electric Capital not too long ago, which basically showed that Cardano was building on an island of its own with little to no interoperability, but a uh, introduction of IBC now instantly allows for Cardano to talk with over 110 plus blockchains moving forward. So a huge step towards interoperability. And there's also here a benefit towards ETH that we'll jump into in just a moment. Jumping back into the article, it reads, 
IBC is a widely adopted communication protocol for facilitating the exchange of information between different blockchains. By bridging IBC capabilities to Cardano, projects seeking to establish a bridge between the Cardano network or ecosystem and the Cosmos SDK-based sidechains might use this solution. Furthermore, and in closing, it reads, by implementing the IBC protocol for Cardano, projects in our ecosystem can now easily bridge to Cosmos SDK chains and the broader interchain ecosystem, which composes or which is made up of over 115 interconnected blockchains. Now, jumping over to the official IBC website, which is available at ibcprotocol.dev, they aim to power the interchain. Some of the key things that they basically pride themselves on include universal interoperability, where chains that speak IBC can share any type of data as long as it's encoded in bytes, enabling the industry's most feature-rich cross-chain interactions. It also boasts permissionless access, which means that IBC is completely open source, meaning that anybody can build with IBC and there's no in-protocol rent extraction or hidden fees ever. This is completely free built for and by the community. Lastly, in terms of security, IBC's light client-based interoperability removes the need for a trusted third party in cross-chain interactions, securing tens of billions in annual value transfer without a single exploit since launch. Very, very reassuring to hear. In terms of some of the stats, they've had over $30 billion worth of annual value transfer again, with over 110 chains currently using the protocol. Now let's dive into the actual architecture here. I will have to get myself out of the way, but I wanna briefly explain exactly how IBC works and what we can expect. So looking at the left-hand side here, we're gonna basically assume that we have, or that we have Cardano, which is chain A. And for the right-hand side, let's just assume that we're using Celestia, right? So we want Cardano to basically speak with Celestia. In order for that to happen, we have to have an application on Cardano and there has to be a channel involved as well as a connection to the um, second blockchain, which in this case, again, is Celestia. And then there's going to be a light client involved. Now let's break the light client down first, and then we'll talk about the connections and the channels. So for anybody who isn't aware of what a light client is, they're basically the heart of the IBC transport layer. A light client is a lightweight rep representation of the destination chain that lives directly within the state machine of the source chain. In this example, again, chain A is Cardano. Let's say that Cardano is aiming to connect with Celestia. That would then mean that the light client here, right, would be a light version of Celestia. Again, that's gonna be held directly within the Cardano network or the Cardano um, state machine. Next, we have the connections where it reads, a connection is responsible for connecting two different light clients together. So that's how light client B here, right, is able to connect to light client A on the right-hand side. Next, we have the channels here, which basically allow for communications to take place between both of the chains, where each channel acts as a conduit for connecting a module or application on the source chain to a module or an application on the destination chain. Data packets between the source and destination chains are sent over this abstraction layer. Last but not least, we have the relayers, which are right in the middle of both of the chains, where those are gonna be permissionless off-chain processes that ferry data packets from one chain to another. Again, relayers can basically scan chain states, build transactions based off of each state, and submit the transactions to the chains involved directly within the network. Relayers play a crucial role in the IBC because chains do not directly send messages to each other over networking infrastructure. Instead, they create and store the data to be retrieved and used by the relayer to build IBC packets. Hopefully that's given you guys a better idea as to how the IBC protocol works and exactly what we can expect moving forward. Again, I wanna jump back in here to take a look at the ecosystem. Um, a huge, huge opportunity here when it comes to Cardano, as well as all of the other networks that are included in IBC. This is obviously just the beginning. I would assume that as time grows on and as IBC becomes more robust and adopted, there'll be more opportunities for Cardano to interconnect with other builders. 
Now, I want to quickly touch on the Ethereum side of the equation here as well. So I want to read one more piece from the article that was released by the Cardano Foundation. It states, in addition to joining the IBC ecosystem, the implementation of IBC for Cardano adds another option for connecting EVM or Ethereum virtual machine based sidechains directly to Cardano. This will allow for developers to seamlessly deploy EVM based decentralized apps or dApps on Cardano sidechains, combining the familiarity and developer tools of the Ethereum ecosystem with the security and scalability of Cardano. If you guys missed the release of the EVM-based um, SDK that was, I believe, developed and released by IOG, this basically aimed to provide a framework and a set of um, dedicated tools for anybody who's coming from EVM to build directly on a sidechain connected to Cardano. So it seems like um, this basically will be playing hand in hand with that. Now, backing up here within Cardano, we've got impressive security being one of the best chains in terms of uptime next to Bitcoin. We already have decentralization with nearly 3000 node operators or stake pool operators backing up the network here. And we're now on the cusp of governance with the release of the chain, the chain hard fork in the introduction of SIP number 1694. Now, Following those three things, the next thing on our plate is interoperability. And we're seeing IOG, as well as the Cardano Foundation, really beginning to work on that aspect of things as well. So let me know what you guys think down below. This is a huge update, a pretty big milestone here for the Cardano ecosystem. The introduction of Cardano into the IBC ecosystem, which now boasts over 110 blockchains, which now use that particular protocol. As always, if you guys learn anything along today's video, um, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by DAP Central and you want more content like this, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me as it pertains to IBC, Cosmos, Ethereum, or Cardano, then leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.